What up, y'all? This is the kid. I'm a day CEO of Platinum Boy Music Inc. Bad Boy Hitman producer, also Trey Songs, music director and tour drummer. And right now you're watching SBTV. You hurt? Make sure you tune in. Peace. I used to rap. It lasted for about five minutes. Uh, yeah, wasn't wasn't really me. It wasn't really something I was passionate about. I wanted to do music, just wasn't sure what and how I was going to do it. Uh, so I started rapping, and was like this is not really me. Just you know, as a musician, just transitioned easily to producing. And I feel that uh, that was the best thing to do. <laughs> I actually started at my mom's, my mom's house. You know, she was complaining about the noise and the music and being too loud and then the, uh, the electricity bill that came through. I started out on a Roland XP50. Uh, and it wasn't even mine. It was actually uh, the minister of music at my church. I just bought it, just purchased it. I was excited, I got a new keyboard and I was just like, let me borrow it. <laughs> kind of threw it out there and I knew he was going to say no, but he actually didn't. He actually was like, okay, cool, take it took it home and kind of figured it out. That's what I started producing on it. Uh, didn't know nothing about it. You know, I had a sequencer on it and uh, started making beats on there. And I thought they were hot. You know, never, no one else really thought they were hot, but I thought they were hot. So, uh, you know, I was, you know, playing at my church at the time. So that was kind of like my job as well. So I got, you know, I paid a lot of money, but paid enough to where I said, here, mom, you know, here's a hundred dollars this month for, you know, uh, electricity bill, because I was on that, you know, equipment all day long. The early point of my career, uh, when I first started, I was able to meet Derek D. Angeletti, who was uh, one of the original Hitman producers. Um, you know, Benjamin's hypnotized, you know, produced some amazing records. Um, and he, he became one of my mentors um, at, at an early at an early start of in my career as a producer. And um, you know, I stayed in contact with him. He kind of said, you should do this with your drums. You should go get your MPC. You should, you know, your drums are not hard enough. You know, he always guided me in regards to you know, how to make my production better. And uh, one day I got a phone call to go in the studio and to work alongside Heavy D. Um, you know, definitely rest in peace, Heavy D. Um, and I was in the studio with him for about two months at uh, Daddy's House Recording Studios. Um, and in that time, I learned so much. You know, I was surrounded by so many great people, so many great artists. You know, I met Diddy there. I met uh, Half Pierre. Um, so I was always around. And um, you know, it was kind of a moment where I met everybody and just moved on. You know what I mean? Always connected with D Dot, but moved on and kind of you know built my legacy as a producer. Uh, you know, so the years went on and. Produced over 50 artists before I even, you know, attached myself with Bad Boy. Um, and you know, it wasn't until I started producing records for their artists, you know, Sherry Dennis, uh, Danny Lee Kane, uh, Donny Klain, that kind of like, you know, uh, brought awareness to what I was doing as a producer. It's an amazing experience to be a part of a legendary team. Uh, you know, bringing bringing what I bring to the team as well. I haven't transitioned into the software thing yet. You know. I, it's maybe a lazy thing, you know, me being lazy, you know, being comfortable of in regards to how I've been creating. And sometimes when you're comfortable and you're kind of set in your own way, it's hard to, you know, transition into something new, something different. So uh, I, I feel like I have to do it. It's just taking me a long time to transition and leave that NPC behind and, you know, go on the computer and go into Logic or go into Pro Tools. So, you know, when, when creating music, I kind of just do me. You know, I don't really gravitate to what's on the radio. I don't. I create it, and, and, and I love it first. You know, so if it's something that I create, and I'm bouncing around and you know, doing my little, you know, my little moves, and you know, kind of you know, nine hard and saying, okay, I can hear Jada Kiss on this. I can hear, you know, Tiny Temple on this. I can hear Justin Bieber on this. You know, you know, that's where I'm at. You know, I feel like if I love it first, I can sell it to you. You know, how can I sell something? to you that I don't love and so when I put my heart and soul into it you know you can feel that as an artist or as a, you know as a fan as a man I love this and you know, the reason why you can say you love it is because when I created it I said I love it first when I'm making a track it can, it can start with a sample it can start with 
you know, a sound effect to start with a keyboard sound. Um, you know, and I know this is really different, but as a drummer, you like actually leave the drums for last. You know, to create the melody first, I will create the whole track music melody-wise and add the drums later. And the reason, the reason why I do that is because if you add the drum sounds first, it kind of like it kind of locks you into whatever that pattern is. So if you lay the music first, you can say, okay, this can be a southern track. I can put like a you know a nice little hard New York beat to it. You know, I can make it West Coast. You know, because you can, you know, I can have that, 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 that going. You know, it could be or it could be like It don't matter. It's, it's the same, you know, chords that I'm playing, but I can change the beat. You know, I can do whatever I want to do with the beat. So, you know, I don't want, I don't want to lock in, you know, because I can create the music and be thinking one way, and after it's all created, I'll be like, nah, I really kind of feel this. Just switch it up. So that's why I leave the drums for last. It works for me. It's weird, you know, but it, but it works for me. A lot of producers have achieved a lot of success with having one particular sound, one particular style. Um, you know, when when I, when I started producing, I always said I don't I don't want you to realize it's me. I don't want you to know it's me that made that track. I want to surprise you every time. I didn't want to kind of like box myself in. I kind of wanted to be able to produce all type of genres of music, all type of styles, all type of sounds and allow myself to be able to produce for, you know, more than one artist, you know, just, just everybody. Um, and, and, I've, and I've been successful at it. You know, I try not to use the same sounds. You know, I look for various different samples, you know, the samples from different records. You know, it kind of surprised you. Like, oh, Amadeus did that? Wow, that doesn't, that doesn't sound like him. But, you know, a lot of people say they, they love my drums. They love my drum sounds, they love my patterns. Drums not pretty hard. Um, and because I'm a drummer, you know, the drum programming is, is always on point. You know, producing is, you have to study. You have to study the artist, you have to study the sound, and, and kind of lock into where they are creatively to be able to transition and create that type of music. Um, you know, because, you know, they would say, you know, some people would say, well, you're from, from New York, why would you, you know, produce, you know, music for T.I., music for Jeezy, they're from Atlanta, you know, why would you try to, you know, produce music for, for Snoop and Game, you know, they're in L.A., but it's like, Music, music is universal. You know, just because I'm, you know, from, just because I'm from New York, you know, that don't mean I can't, you know, produce music all around the world. So, you know, I kind of like lock into whatever that sound is and put my twist to it. I don't mimic what I hear. I just, okay, this is what that's like. Okay, now what, what would it, what would it be like if Amadeus produced, you know, a track for Game? Or Amadeus, Amadeus produced a track for Ti or Jesus. So, you know, that's how that, that, that pretty much comes about. You know, the business, the music business has changed a lot. Uh, you know. In the beginning years of my career, you know, we actually got to go in and work hands-on, you know, with the artists, creating from scratch, mixing the songs together. But it's changed, you know. It's more of send me the track, you know, I'll write to it, I'll record it, and um, you know, lay it down. Actually, for the Pro Tools session, I'll mix it on my own. Um, and I'm really not a fan of that because, you know, I think it's great as an artist to, to connect with the producer. You know, it's us as the producers that kind of like create the, create the blueprint. So, you know, I feel like you create the blueprint, you know, as an artist, you come along, you, know, you add your, your artwork to it, you know, your, your painting, you know, whatever you see creatively. And I feel like it's my job to come after you and add, you know, the finishing touches along with you. We, we both have visions. You know, I had a vision when I created the track. You have a vision when you heard the track, you wrote to it, you created the song to it. But it's like, you know, imagine when we sit together. You, you lay your vision on the table, I lay my vision on the table, we come together and make it the best, you know, the best, you know, as it can be. So, you know, I don't, you know, a lot of the artists that I work with, Dustin Beavers and, you know, Tiger and Chris Brown, a lot of that was just pretty much done. Here's the track, love the track, write it on my own, here's a song, and we got a song. I mean, I'm not mad, you know, but I would definitely rather be in the studio with the artist. So hopefully, you know, the game changes and kind of goes back to that place where, you know, artists create directly with the producers. The mixtape game is, 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 is kind of like what made the music industry change. Um, in a good way and a bad way. You know, in a good way more for the artists and a bad way for the producers because a lot of the producers aren't being paid, you know, for mixtape records. Um, it's, it's tough, you know, when, you know, as an artist, you can go out and put out a mixtape for free, 16, 18, 17 songs, and go tour, you know, off of that mixtape you put out without us being paid and without us, you know, receiving royalties and publishing off it, man. And you, you know, making a million dollars, you know, I'm hearing you perform my song I produce and you getting paid, but I'm not, you know, so that's, that's pretty tough. And, uh, 
you know, a lot more people, you know, uh, due to technology, um, you know, uh, the softwares that are out today, you know, a lot of more people feel like they're producers. It's a difference between, you know, beat makers, producers. I feel like I'm both. You know, I feel like I'm both because if you're not in the studio with the artist, if you're not fully creating the record with them, then you're not producing, you just made the beat. You know, but if you do have the opportunity to get in with the artist, then that's producing. So I consider myself both. Sometimes I can, sometimes I can't. Uh, but you know, the game is always changing, you know, and it, 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 we suffer. You know, I don't feel like the producer is as, as respected as you know we used to be. We, 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 you know, the producer is important. You know, if you didn't have the beat, you know, you wouldn't have the song. And then if you wouldn't have the song, you wouldn't have your favorite artist. Uh, so I definitely feel like we need to go back to respecting the producer, making sure the producers, you know, are, are being taken care of properly. Um, you know, so that all can be well. The reason why I'm on NPC today is because that was what was available to me at that time. You know, nowadays, you know, they have so much to choose from. You know, so they can, you know, I, you know, the, the up and coming producers can go ahead and start creating on Logic. They can start creating on Pro Tools or Fruity Loops or whatever, you know, uh, they're comfortable with. You know what I mean? So I know Hit Boy creates on uh, Fruity Loops. You know, so you know, you can say all you want to say about Fruity Loops, but you know, niggas in Paris <laughs> was produced on Fruity Loops. You know, so it's not about what you're using, but it's about the person that's behind the equipment that can actually, you know, bring the best out of whatever pieces of equipment you're using. I, I really respect the future. You know what I mean? I I salute those that that come behind me and and do what they do. You know, it's, in, it's actually it's actually inspiring to me to hear something new, to hear a new a new style, a new sound, a new approach musically uh, to tracks. If you hot, you hot. Uh, and I respect it. So, you know, cats like Lex Luger, I, you know, I, I salute uh, Hit Boy, you know, uh, niggas in Paris. That's, a, that's, a, that's an amazing, that's, that's an amazing record. I mean, he's definitely, uh, uh, you know, living off of that, 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 that monumental record. So, you know, I, I appreciate it. It's inspiring to me. It's kind of like, okay, man, like, you know, if he made that, kind of pushes me to go and either make something as, as hot or even hotter, you know. So I, I look at it as inspiration for those, who, you know, producers that are coming up, you know. You know, producers, we have a bond. I feel like producers have a bond. You know, a lot of artists, you know, kind of, you know, go against each other and, you know, hate on each other. But, you know, I think us as producers, we kind of connect. And if I hear something hot, if we hear something hot, we kind of salute each other and, and you know, big each other up and, and, and show love. And that's what it's, that's how it should be. You know, if, if you were able to create something hot that I didn't, you know, why not salute you on that? Why not, you know, celebrate you rather than hating? I ain't, I ain't with the hating, man, you know? You know, it's been a great journey. It's been a great journey. Me producing for the artists that I've worked with definitely got a lot, you know, coming up in the future. Uh, Fabulous, Jeezy, um, Chipmunk, Trade of Truth. I have my own artist actually as well, Tiffany Mignon. Uh, we call her the Angel of R&B. She has uh, two singles out right now. Uh, Dance the Night Away featuring Fred the Godson, who's uh, he's a big rapper in New York right now. Uh, and uh, I know how to love you.com, which is out. Uh, both produced by myself and uh, so definitely be on the lookout for her um, and just you know shout out to everybody that, that, that is a fan of what I do support what I do um, you know shout out to the artists that gave me the opportunity to you know, share my gift and talent with the world you know music um, you know the whole Platinum Boy music family you know shout out to the whole Bad Boy worldwide family the whole Trey songs experience team songs and uh, just living life you know happy to be doing what I, what I love to do uh, I wake up you know every day that same passion that I had, you know, 15 years ago. Um, you know, so I definitely want to inspire you know, the, the next generation, the people that's going to come behind me and, and keep this music thing alive. The passion that I have for music and creating music pushes me forward. It allows me to keep going and doing what I do. The only way I feel like you can really achieve the success I've achieved is if you're passionate about it. The music business is very hard. It's very challenging. People say sky's the limit. I normally say sky's not the limit. You know, when you get up in the airplane and you're flying over the clouds, you know, to all different places, of, you know, around the world, you know, it's like, wow, my, my gift, my talent, my music is, you know, does this, and, and, and it's amazing, you know, so definitely shout out to SBT for having me again, uh, shout out to Jamal Edwards for having me, you know, the entire team, and looking forward, and, and hopefully that, you know, this is inspiring. You know, to those that are watching and, and just some motivate them to you know chase their dreams you know there's definitely dreams definitely come true the witness um, hard work dedication you know, so keep going hard keep working hard and hopefully i see you at the top because that's the only way that's the only place i'm going top